Hello friends, uh, welcome back. So, this is uh, lecture number 2 of irrigation and uh, drainage. Uh, mostly in this uh, we will be focusing on soil properties. So, the soil properties uh, I mean I divide into two lectures uh, because so this is the core of uh, learning you know uh, the irrigation principles and also the drainage principles. So, that is why uh, we need to understand the basic uh, soil properties so that uh, later you won't be you know feeling uncomfortable with this okay so here uh, if you see uh, the water is the main connection uh, between soil uh, plant and atmosphere so this is really a continuum so uh, if you see here the hydrological cycle so uh, initially the water is uh, going to evaporate. So, if you if you observe here, uh, basically the water evaporates from a sea or any water uh, body. Then after that, uh, it is going to condense uh, in the atmosphere. Then the condensed water uh, is going to form uh, clouds, and then clouds are going to precipitate down uh, as rainfall. And then once it is falling on the uh, surface, so the, uh, some part of precipitation goes as uh, overland flow or uh, runoff. Then uh, other part will infiltrate down into the soil, and then uh, goes into the different soil layers. Then meeting the groundwater uh, some portion. Then with the base flow, some water may uh, go into the you know sub as a subsurface flow to the streams, and finally. Uh, it may go into uh, in other rivers or, or, or ocean any other water bodies. So, and also some portion of uh, water which is transpired from the, the plant surface to the atmosphere. So, uh, so if you observe this, so the water is basically uh, it is connecting the soil and plant and, and also the atmosphere. So, if you, uh, so this is a very good example of uh, the hydrologic uh, cycle. So, here a uh, little bit elaborate uh, view if you see. So, uh, both evaporation from the surface as well as uh, uh, you know uh, plant body. So, that is evapotranspiration. So, that goes into the atmosphere and precipitation as input to the system. Uh, then the same thing. So, some portion goes into uh, uh, ground water. Okay. So, then the soil water which is uh, really between you know uh, in, in, in the unsaturated flow basically. So, in the soil which is on the surface will have the soil water. So, that is basically important when you are talking about the plants. So, plant uh, really absorb or, or takes the soil water. So, this is uh, the main important uh, you know the component of hydrological cycle. Okay, so so if you see the soil, so soil is a three-phase system, you know. So the three-phase system that that means if you see it here, uh, this is the soil, uh, you know, the part of soil column. If you make it cross section, right? So you can see the solid particles like this, and also there is always some space between soil particles. So, that is filled with uh, you know uh, the liquid phase and and also the gases phase. So, that is why the soil is three phase system. So, uh, so water, uh, air and uh, the solid. So, solid will have you know the minerals and organic matter and also other you know chemical compounds. So, here is the liquid phase the mostly the soil moisture, but also we can see the dissolved chemicals. Uh, which is in you know uh, liquid form okay i mean within the soil moisture and soil air uh, this is gaseous form and also you can see the gaseous chemicals okay so uh, the whole entity can be like 50% is of you know the the uh, solid portion 50% and remaining 50% air water 
So, and, and again the solid uh, has solid uh, particle has 47 percent minerals and 3 percent organic matter and water 25 percent a 25 percent. So, this is equally divided. So, this is an approximate like a good proportionation of uh, three phases you can clearly see. So, then okay. So, then uh, this is a uh, typical soil profile. Yeah. So, this is a typical soil profile if you see. So, if you go and uh, uh, take a look uh, down into the soil and make a, a cross section view. So, it will have different horizons. So, that means different layers. Okay. So, see here. So, this is uh, uh, o or uh, like uh, O horizon. So, that is called primarily composed of organic matter. Okay. So, because on the surface there will be lot of you know litter uh, that means, lot of plant material which is accumulating on the surface and over period of time that will you know compost or decompose into organic forms. And later the next layer is uh, uh, surface. So, the surface will have uh, organic matter this O m is the organic matter mixes, mixes with the inorganic uh, products of weathering. Okay. So, then the next phase uh, or next layer will be uh, subsoil. The subsoil will have fine material which is accumulated and enriched with calcium carbonate. You all know what is calcium carbonate, right? So, this is like uh, white washing purpose we use this calcium carbonate. So, the mostly this uh, layer will contain you know uh, the calcium carbonate and also the fine material. So, the, the last uh, layer which is uh, this parent material so, that is substratum. So, the parent material uh, generally the, the, this will be staying here for you know years like you know, centuries you can say. So, over that over that the other soil formation slowly have been taken place. So, this is the bedrock which is uh, uh, lying as support to entire system. Then below that you know there are aquifers or maybe you know uh, some other uh, maybe you can repeat the same layers. Okay. So, this is all uh, typical soil profile if you look at and then and then soil properties. Okay. So, so here the soil properties are the first properties you are looking is the soil texture. So, the soil texture is a relative proportion of various sizes of individual soil particles. Okay. Suppose, you, you have you know you have taken a soil in your hand. If you see the uh, particles soil particles they are not at the same size. Okay. They are uh, you know different size of soil particles. So, that is why here. So, what proportion of this you know uh, different uh, size of soil particles will give the soil texture. Okay. So, uh, if you see this picture here, the closely if you look at, so this is from uh, a soil and if you take a little bit of uh, portion from the soil and expose it here and it looks like you know uh, like the soil the size of the particles if you find like 0 0.05 to 2 mm and we call it as you know the sand. So, we call it as a sand and if you take you know a little bit you know, some other soil which has uh, I mean con contains this kind of particles tiny particles having size 0 0.002 mm to 0 0.05 mm. So, that is called silt. Okay. So, then if the soil particle size is less than 0 0.002 mm and this is called the clay. So, the mostly we will see uh, sand, silt or uh, clay. So, that constitutes the texture. So, we call soil texture and uh, so, but how do you determine the soil texture? So, this uh, the sizes are uh, based on USDA classification that is United States Department of Agriculture. So, they have classified 
the soil uh, sizes, I mean soil uh, types or soil textural classes we call. The sand will have the size between 0.05 mm to 2 mm, whereas silt will have size from 0.002 mm to 0.05 mm and clays the size is less than 0.002 mm. So, it is very tiny. Okay. So, then texture may be modified by organic matter content, clay minerals and their associated ions. So, suppose you have the sand uh, for example, 60 percent sand you have right and if you mix with so in, in course of time. So, you have added you know manure or you added uh, some clay content or something like that in that. So, definitely that will that will change the the sizes okay the size so some some so your sand content may decrease or uh, you know the the fine material will increase so that's why the the texture may really uh, vary with the addition of organic matter and the clay content or other minerals okay okay so then so generally this is this is I mean the texture is uh, represented with the this is called a textural triangle. Okay. So, the triangle will have three sides. So, the three sides so this is the uh, bottom. So, e this is in equilateral triangle. So, in the bottom it is showing the percentage of sand here and percentage of clay on this side and percentage of silt on this side. Okay. So, uh, if you come up with like numbers like uh, sand, suppose you have sand uh, 60 percent, you know silt, uh, your soil has 40 per, uh, sorry, uh, uh, let, let us say 30 percent and clay you have 10 percent. So, all together it comes 100 percent. Okay. So, then you want to identify so, this case belong to so which textural uh, you know uh, soil type. So, then this triangle definitely will help we are going to see that in, in the later slide. So, uh, so basically the textural uh, triangle that is coarse versus fine and light versus heavy you can clearly you know visualize with this triangle based on the sand, silt and clay content. Okay. So, this textural uh, triangle or soil texture definitely will affect the water movement and the storage. So, you have like you know a coarse textural soil, coarse texture in the sense you have particle sizes are really heavier I mean larger, larger particle size. So, that will help the water movement really easy like, like the faster compared to you have like tiny pores, okay, tiny, tiny, tiny particles, right? So that that means your sand content is less, and your silt and clay content are more. So definitely that is going to influence your water movement. So here the water movement is going to be slower, okay? So that's the reason uh, the the soil texture definitely affects the water movement and the storage. So storage in the sense, so you have the clay soils. So, clay so soils what happens it holds water and uh, it does not transmit water. So, that is why it, it can store more water uh, in case of you know clay soils right. So, then the next is as I said we are going to see this example. So, in this example if a soil contains So, if, if suppose soil contains 60 percent sand, 25 percent uh, silt and uh, 15 percent clay. So, you want to find out what is that soil textural class. So, here, so this is USDA uh, textural triangle, right? This is triangle and in this, so the first thing is 60 percent sand. So, look here. So, this is the sand content right this is the sand. So, 60 percent is here basically right 
So, now what you have to do? You have to draw line in this direction. Okay, this is 60 percent line right? and then silt 25 percent. So, this is the silt and 25 percent is here and draw line parallel to this and this is going to hit here. Okay. Then clay 15 percent. So, 15 percent is here. So, look at here this is almost 15 percent and just join the cross section. Okay. So, right now the resulting one is really focusing at this point. Now, if you see here the, the bright lines. So, look at this here this dark lines right from here to here and it says it says sandy loam. So, it is not visible right now, but let us see. So, I will eliminate everything then if you see here. So, finally, in this example, so the textural class is falling under here and we say so in this condition like 60 percent sand, 20 percent silt, 15 percent clay falls under sandy loam class. Okay. So, in this way the textural triangle uh, will help us in uh, uh, finding out the which class of this particular uh, soil constituents or right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So next is this. Uh, so how to analyze this uh, textural I mean soil texture? So how to analyze this uh, soil texture? So, how to get you know the percentage sand okay, and percentage silt and percentage clay. So, this is very important how to get this from a soil for a given soil how do we measure percentage of sand, percentage of silt, percentage of clay. So, once you know this and definitely using your you know the triangle you can find out which class of the soil belong to. So, there are few methods, there are important methods or frequent methods you can say. So, the first is the sieve method. So, the second is the sedimentation method. So, the mostly the sieve method uh, will, will be applicable to this particle size or sand size more than 0 0.05 mm. And sedimentation method, I mean if the particle size finer than that, we are going to use either pipette method or hydrometer method. Okay. So, so let us see the methods one by one. Uh, okay. So, here uh, I am going to show this uh, textural analysis by using C method. So, in the C method what happens you will be having different uh, you know sieves of standard uh, standardized sieves basically. So, you can see the picture here this is the sieve okay. and now you are going to arrange the sieves on the basis of the, the opening size, okay, size opening size. So, first we will put uh, the bigger opening sieve then followed by the smaller and smaller 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 smaller. Okay. So, it is like you. So, here if you see the stack of sieves, right. So, here this sieve will, will be uh, having maybe you know 2 mm, 2 mm size uh, dia. So, th this is this is called you know uh, aperture. So, aperture is, uh, is the number of openings per a unit square inch. Okay. So, then uh, so, then this could be you know 1 mm and uh, this could be 500 micron micrometers uh, sieve and uh, this could be you know 300 micrometers uh, sieve and like that. So, it goes. So, and the last one here we may have like you know 75 micrometers. So, that is what will be expecting it the last one and at the end this this is called pan okay so whatever the size which is finer than 75 mm will be collected in the pan okay so this is the thing so so after making the stack of sieves arranging a stack of sieves 
you are going to you know uh, put material just like here it is showing. So, you are going to put material on top of the sieve right and this is called a, a you know sieve shaker uh, sieve shaker. So, here you put the material maybe around uh, you know uh, the 200 grams or maybe 500 grams right. So, put the material here and uh, put it under you know sieve shaker and so, sieve shaker it shakes it helps in shaking the sieves ok. Uh, then after let us say uh, 4 to 5 minutes of sieving then you have to take off the, the sieves out. Then you are going to what, what you are going to do you are going to collect the material which is retained in each sieve ok. So, that is what here if you see. So, the material which is retained in this sieve is weighed ok. So, here the total I mean total amount of material is 200 grams and we are going to collect or we are going to weigh the material which is retained on each sieve ok this sieve this sieve this sieve and also the pan. And then we are going to find out the percentages percentage of uh, retention ok and then and then uh, we are going to find out the percentage finer and we are going to draw a graph between size and percentage finer ok and then we are going to see what is the effective size and what is coefficient of uniformity right. So, these things we are going to find out with the uh, textural analysis and finally, our main objective is percentage of you know sand, percentage of silt and percentage of clay. So, these things we are going to find out. So, let us see in the uh, next, uh, next if you see ok. So, this, this uh, finally, what you are going to get. So, this is the sieve number. So, this is the sieve number you have you have put all the sieves together right. Finally, you, you, you at the bottom it is a pan and uh, this is the sizes right 25 mm, 19 mm and uh, so mostly we, we you know in our case the agricultural soils. So, we start with here right. So, 2.36 is the size and then following by all these you know uh, sizes. And the next the we, we are going to find out the weight retained in each sieve ok at the end of the experiment. So, here the total is uh, around 2 kg used ok and find out percentage retained. So, this this is uh, 10 divided by you know 2000. So, that is that is what you get 0 0.5 right. So, the amount retained and divided by total amount. So, like that you are, you are going to find out the, the uh, percentages ok. Then the cumulative, so 0 0.5 and you are going to add 0 0.5 uh, this will be you know 0 0.5 plus this 2.5 right and this will be equal to 7 plus 2.5 is not it yeah. So, it goes, so this is a cumulative and then if you can subtract with the 100 percent you get the percentage finer. So, it is reverse. So, the percentage finer that means, so, so suppose this this is the sieve right. So, the amount of material which is retained on uh, this thing this is the percentage uh, suppose uh, 30 grams ok 30 gram material is left on the surface. So, this is uh, let us say 2 mm sieve this is 2 mm sieve. So, so 30 gram of material will have this size more than 2 mm right. So, that is the reason this 30 grams uh, of material is not falling or not passing right. So, the amount which is passing is reverse. Suppose you have like uh, you know 50 grams material uh, is kept on top and 30 grams left and only 20 grams is passed. So, you are going to see that what is percentage of uh, passed material or percentage of final material ok. So, here you are going to draw a graph between you know grain size and then percentage of passing. So, the graph looks like this ok. So, this the graph goes like you know sinusoidal. So, here m m m so, with this percentages we are going to see this is called uh, this is uh, 60. So, uh, we called d 60 
that means 60 percentage of material is passed ok. 60 percentage of this 200 kg or 200 grams is passed right. And then and then uh, so if you if you want to find out what is D60 just draw a line which is uh, you know crossing this uh, curve here and the corresponding diameter is available here ok. So, this in this way you are going to find out D60 and and, and also find out D10 uh, here right. So, D10 is D10 is effective size right and also the uh, coefficient of uniformity that is D60 by D10. So, you get 3.9 right. So, this way, but uh, what about percentage of sand, silt, clay? So, that is important. So, then you have to go back to the the you know the uh, USDA class and see. So, generally the USDA class if you see it 2 to uh, what is that 0 0.01 something like that. So, you use you use the uh, textual class and find out here right here and you can find out the percentages here percentage of passing and uh, so that that will that will give the so knowing the size knowing the size here and finding out the percentages ok. So, this way you can find out the percentage of silt sand clay in textural analysis a sieve analysis ok. Now, so next is uh, so next is the textual analysis by uh, pipette method ok. This is called a uh, pipette method. So, here uh, you need a pipette and also the these are measuring jars. So, measuring cylinders right these are measuring cylinders. So, take 20 grams of soil sample right add 5 ml of uh, sodium hexa metaphosphate. So, this is this is called a dispersing agent ok. So, then also di water. So, blend it just uh, you know uh, blend it for 5 minutes then uh, and put it uh, put the material in measuring cylinder and make up make up to you know this 1000 ml. So, it is like 1 1 liter. So, 1 liter then so what you have to do. So, uh, the 2 times you count in 5 minutes you take out uh, you know the sample take out the water sample from this and find out the dry weight of the sample ok find out the dry weight of sample. Similarly, after 5 hours take out the sample using a pipette uh, and find out the dry weight of the sample dry weight ok this is also dry weight. So, with these two uh, measurements we can estimate percentage of silt sand clay. So, how are you going to uh, measure? So, here uh, remember so we are going we are taking here uh, 0.25 ml of uh, you know volume of uh, solution each time ok. So, next we are going to see how we are going to find out the uh, the calculations are like this ok. So, for example, this is the so soil specimen A right. So, A is the soil specimen the soil. So, initially uh, at uh, 5 minute uh, uh, time you have taken a sample and find out the dry weight is 0 0.16. At 5 hours you have taken the sample the dry weight is 0 0.09. So, uh, percentage of seed plus clay particles. So, that is estimated with this. So, the weight of sample at 5 minute. So, this one right divided by weight of soil ok and volume of soil sample taken and total volume. So, here the total volume is uh, 1000 ml and volume of sample is 0.25 ml and weight of a dry sample at 5 minute that is 0.16 this is 0.16 and weight of soil. So, that is uh, if you go back and see I think this is uh, 20, 20 grams ok. So, all together it will give you the 32 percent silt plus clay. Similarly, you do it for uh, clay here percentage of clay using this and you get 17.55. So, subtracting 17.55 from uh, 32 you get 14.55 that is the percentage of silt and you already have percentage of clay and knowing the total 
uh, you can find out the percentage of sand particles. So, because the total it makes 100 percent. So, knowing 17.55, 14.45. So, sum of these two uh, subtract from 100 you will get percentage of sand. So, this way you can find out percentage of silt, sand, clay from the pipette method. Okay. So, then we are going to see the other method. So, that is called uh, uh, that is called hydrometer uh, method. So, in hydrometer, so this is this is the hydrometer. So, basically the hydrometer used for measuring the specific uh, gravity of uh, water okay, or any material. So, uh, here what happens the 50 grams of uh, soil has been uh, weighed. So, the soil must be sieved through 2 mm size. Okay. So, then you are going to add uh, soil and uh, di water as uh, and, and also the dispersing agent to the blending pipe. So, you are going to mix that for 5 minutes then add that mix to the your 1000 ml uh, measuring cylinder okay, with the di water. So, make, make it up to 1000 ml by using di water. So, then hydrometer is uh, uh, inserted in, into the uh, solution and here 2 times 40 seconds and uh, 20 minutes you have to you have to take 2 readings. So, hydrometer will have you know density readings on top. So, and uh, and before that the hydrometer is been uh, you know uh, calibrated for uh, different you know uh, amount of the, the concentration of the solutions. Okay. So, remember this hydrometer method and uh, the previous uh, pipette method they work based on the Stokes law right. So, the Stokes, uh, Stokes, the Stokes law. Okay. So, so, Stokes law uh, basically it uh, tells the speed of particles like heavier particles versus lighter particles. So, when the, 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 the velocity of fall that fall velocity depends on the size of the particle. Okay, so, that so based on that I mean you can find out the settling velocity and settling time and the particle diameter. Okay, so, then then here so this is the calculation if you see look at here. So, initial mass is m 1 that is a 50 gram per liter for example and 40 seconds of hydrometer reading. <coughs> so, so, that means immediately the sand is going to settle and whatever the particles which are in the suspension or silt and clay in 40, 40 seconds. So, that uh, that is m 2 you get 30 suppose you got 30 gram per liter and 20 minutes time. So, the silt is going to settle and only clay is, go, uh, is under suspension. So, that is m 3. So, you get 30 milligram uh, 10 gram per second. So, so that gives us uh, clay. So, grams m 1 minus m 2 will give 20 grams. So, that that is a sand and clay this is 20 minutes reading whatever you got this one. So, that is uh, clay and if you can subtract uh, so this and this okay. So, that will that will give so like uh, you got silt is equal to 50 grams a total material uh, sand plus clay. So, that will give this is silt. Okay. And then uh, uh, knowing the total amount you can estimate the percentages individual percentages. Okay. So, this way you can uh, measure the soil uh, I mean percentage of sand silt clay using hydrometer. So, then uh, next is so, there is a, a very easy method you can do at home. Uh, so, this is basically uh, given by realm okay, R E L M A. So, that is a regional land management unit world agroforestry center. So, in this only thing you have to uh, require is a bottle the plastic bottle you can say. So, put the soil uh, uh, fill the uh, plastic bottle with the soil up to one third of the volume and then uh, add water to another one third right. So, this is water this is soil. So, then uh, shake the uh, bottle well right. 
So, then what you have to do uh, leave it for 4 hours ok. So, then you can find out the settlings ok. So, here whatever settle at the bottom, so that will be the gravel and the next layer is the sand and next layer is the silt and next layer is the clay. So, knowing the depths of settlement, so you can find out the percentage of clay, silt, sand and then gravel ok. So, this way this method works it is very easy method. So, then uh, so the next next is going to be, so the whole soil textural class if you see the soil textural classification. Uh, so, basically as I mentioned it is given by USDA right and then also there is the International Soils and Society ISS. Yes. So, this is USDA class and this is ISS class. So, gravel which is uh, greater than 2 mm right and this is also greater than 2 mm and very coarse sand, this is very coarse sand and uh, uh, coarse sand uh, 0 0.5 to 1 mm and followed. So, this sizes are uh, decreasing if you observe down and finally, the clay will have less than 0 0.002 and the same is suggested by ISSS ok. So, and uh, so finally, here uh, in this class what we learned today, so we learned the importance of uh, water, so which connects basically the soil, plant and atmosphere and then uh, and then uh, the hydrologic cycle. So, then after that the what constitutes a soil ok and then uh, uh, how the soil uh, class uh, I mean soil properties like soil texture is being uh, measured or represented uh, right and we, we studied uh, sieve analysis. So, using sieve analysis you can estimate uh, percentage of silt, uh, sand, clay. And similarly, there is the, uh, there are other two methods that basically work on uh, Stokes law or sedimentation method. So, that is uh, uh, what is pipette method, then other one is uh, hydrometry method ok or hydrometer method. So, the finally, uh, after knowing the percentage of silt, sand, clay uh, using a textural triangle, we will be identifying what, uh, what the particular soil textural class ok. So, uh, thank you. In the next class we are going to uh, work on the other uh, soil property like uh, soil structure, bulk density, the particle density and uh, other things ok. Thank you so much.